Gadget RC wants to know about how to approach a program introducing the hobby to kids. How young is too young, and what equipment would you go with? Trying to help the scout district make good decisions. Um, Gadget, the first thing I would do is I would invest in hand controllers. My recommendation would be the Radio Master Pocket. The Radio Master Pocket is about 60 bucks, and if you were going to buy like even as few as 10 or 15, then um, I could put you in touch with Radio Master, and they could probably, like I've done this before, uh, when a school district reached out to me and they wanted to buy some Radio Master radios, I put them in contact with Radio Master. Radio Master gave them a little bit of a volume discount or an educational discount. I can't promise you, because I don't speak for Radio Master, I can't promise you that you would get the same deal, but I can tell you they've done it in the past. They probably would do it again. So if you were going to buy as few as 10 or 15 of them, you could get a little bit of a discount on the price. That $60 retail price might come down to, I won't say what, because I don't want to like anchor you at a, at a number that you then end up not getting. But it, you could you could get uh, you know ten or fifteen of those radios, and then what you can do is you can get the kids in a simulator. Okay, uh, simulators are nowhere near as cool as flying a real drone, and a lot of times people feel differently about well you're just sitting them in front of a computer and making them play a video game. The whole reason I put my kid into Scouts was because I want to get them off the computer, off the screens. I want them interfacing with the real world, and that may be a deal breaker for you depending on you know how your troop is organized and so forth. But that would be my approach, because I can take I can take five kids, 10 kids, and I can put them all in front of a, a laptop. Now, where the laptop's going to come from, <laughs> that's a different question, right? I don't know. But like, I can put them all in front of a laptop, and I can, I, can, I can start them flying, I can start them learning, I can look over their shoulder, and then we don't have 27 tiny wolves flying around the room crashing into everybody. Now, if you didn't want to go the simulator direction, I will tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, uh, 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 to kind of bite my tongue as I say this, um, the Beta FPV Cetus, C-E-T-U-S, um, I reviewed the Beta FPV Cetus, which is a beginner-focused drone. Uh, it has altitude hold, so it, it holds its own altitude. When you raise the throttle, it climbs. When you center the throttle, it just stays where it is. And it's much easier to fly than a pure acro drone. I reviewed the Beta FPV Cetus a while back, and when I reviewed it, I said what I always say about Beta FPV stuff. If you go online, you'll find some number of people saying, I bought this Beta FPV drone. It died the second day I had it. Ah, Beta FPV, never again. And, I, and it's so hard to know whether that's just one person who had a bad experience or whether it's more indicative of the brand as a whole. I feel like people need to be warned that those stories are out there. But for me, at least, the Beta FPV Cetus has been great. Um, my five-year-old son has been playing with it, and he can put the he can put the batteries on the charger because it's a little self-contained you know, automatic charger. You just plug it into USB, plug the battery in. He puts the batteries on the charger. He can take them off the charger. He'll be like, ah, oh, the green light's off. He'll plug it into the drone, but it'll turn on. He can set it down. He'll arm it. He'll fly it around, and he's beat the shit out of it, and it's just taken it and come back for more. He's like disarmed it from 30 feet in the air and dropped it on the grass. And I say, hey, if you keep doing that, it's going to break. But it hasn't broken yet. It still flies. And um, so, like, it's a, it's a sample size of one, but it's been really good to me. And, uh, like, I feel like maybe that might be worth looking into. I don't know. I'm sure the, the chat is going nuts with people saying, beta FPV, never again. But And I... Yeah. Oh, uh, I have a little bit of input on this. Yeah. Is that the, one of the issues is you're saying a scout district. Okay. That means, like, are you doing the lesson plan? Like, are you handling the teaching of these kids? Are you handling vetting how they're handling? Are you just putting them on a simulator and letting them go? Right. You're going to have to think about like you actually have to train them. You, they have to have a process and a plan and things to graduate to, and a way to get a badge or whatever you're doing. Right. So like, I think it's also worth considering that there are STEM options for drones out there that you could buy kits and purchase from companies like flight test has a stem program there's like a drone university or something like i've seen different stem programs that are out there you need to vet them for what technology they're using how much you're going to pay for it and what it does but what it does is enables you not to have to teach everybody like they, you can just distribute this material it's already done for you there's lessons plans there's guides there's weekly 
ways you can handle it, right? Um, just remember that when you're doing this, if you're doing it for a whole district, you're going to want to understand like what's what entails here and actually build a program for them, right? Not just throw them on some uh, radios on the simulator, which I'm and you're not, you're not really suggesting, but I just want to make sure you understand yeah, that like that's a good point. There's something here that you have to do, right? Yeah, you need a you need a lesson plan. It can't just be here's the equipment, have fun. Yeah. Um, so and it can, like, but that's not the goal, right? Yeah. I, I would say, um, like, the beta the beta FPV, the Cetus, there's the Cetus X, there's the Cetus Pro, and so you want to do a little research into those. Um, I also, you could look at the Aquila, the Aquila, I'm not sure how to say it. There's people in the chat saying, oh, no, stay away from the Aquila. My Aquila has held up pretty well, too, and maybe I've just gotten lucky, yeah. uh, but... It's been okay. So I would also say if you're making major purchases, you know, compare the price that you're going to get from beta FPV versus the price you're going to get from like get FPV or RDQ who's going to support you in a bulk order in the future, right? Like yeah. that's the things I would also consider, right? Because if you're doing this and you're going to do a bunch of these and like, yeah, what's your overhead on these breaking in 30 days? Because some of them will, right? And then like Absolutely. how many extra are you going to order? And then how are you going to get them replaced? And what's the customer service going to be like? That's one of the reasons the STEM stuff can be really good is because they're going to support you through it, through the entire program. But it's also going to be more expensive and less hands-on for you because yeah. it's already going to have I mean, a lesson plan and it's going to be based I, on what they send, sell you, right? I wouldn't expect – if you bought 15 of these units from GetFPV – they might give you a small discount. They definitely have the margin to give discount. Um, but like, if you got a bad unit, they're not gonna. I don't. They're gonna just be like, you got to go back to the manufacturer. I think. I don't think they're gonna directly support you in that way if you end up with I a bad you, unit. I think if you, I don't know. I, I I would at least have communication with them. Like, say, hey, I'm gonna well, order 15 yeah. or 20 of these for a scout group, and I wondered if a couple of these break or if these aren't what I, you know, I'm ordering 20. Some of them are maybe DOA. Like, you know, what do I? Are you gonna help me with this, or do I have to work with Beta FPV? I mean, there's no reason not to have the discussion. That's what I would say. It's worth having. A lot of manufacturers these days, a lot of um, retailers these days have gotten a lot less generous with covering for manufacturer. Uh, customer support issues like in the past there was a time when the reseller would just send you another one take it back and then they would go argue with the vendor and I think that uh, margins are down and volumes are down in the last year or two and people have gotten a lot more a lot less generous I guess is what I would say but if you're buying if you're buying 20 you may have a little more latitude the last thing I'll say is one way you may get that support because they're trying to build a new product is Orca. I don't know what the cost will be. It's probably higher than everything else. But if they like really want to build a program, maybe they can use you as some yeah, advertising they're not gonna, or something. They're not gonna they have just a launched a STEM it. program. They just launched a new radio, a new goggles, and a new drone for kids to start the hobby. Like, yeah, that's what does their it literal cost? goal with the progress. That's uh, cool. Like, what does it cost? I I, I, we have to, I mean, if you want to pull it up, but I don't know. Like Yeah, like Orca, in my experience, makes good product, but their price... The, the, when they make these kits, their prices. Uh, STEM kit. Orca STEM kit. I don't know. Uh, maybe it may. Well, we can look. We don't have to speculate. FPV Ace. Uh, what do we got? Orca Dream X5 HD ready. Dream X5 bet. Minofly analog. Uh, what am I looking for? Education. FPV Ace makes a seamless one. Uh, 200, 300 euros, chapter one. FPV is chapter one, 109 euros. What do we got? Yeah, so they're like selling you the radio as chapter one. I believe is how it works. Okay, right? Right. so we have 110 euros for the radio. Oh, and then you're in the simulator. That's fine. I'm not mad at that. FPV skydive is actually a pretty good simulator. Uh, yeah, and they've added tutorials to skydive yeah. now. So, like, that's their, their kind of this is their vision that we've talked about in the past. Right? So, you're paying 110 euros for the controller when you could pay 60 dollars $60 for a Radio Master Pocket, and the Radio Master sure. Pocket is a better controller. Like, you're essentially paying twice as much for the controller to get into the Orca ecosystem. I mean, that has to be acknowledged. You could also yeah. just download the FPV Skydive Simulator and use the Radio Master Pocket to play on the Skydive Simulator. I believe the lessons cost money, but the the simulator itself is free, if I remember yeah, correctly. The only, yeah, the only reason you would be going the Orca route is to either f- find, like, basically communicate to them and do some kind of deal, or, like, for some reason you would feel confident. Like, this isn't going to be cheaper. And then right? you're paying $300 be... for a Tiny Whoop that uh, something comparable would be 100 to 130 dollars. So you're playing more than double, 300 euros. So uh, yeah, 
you would, that's what I expected. They make good product, but you pay a, a substantial premium to get into their ecosystem. And like, if I'm if I'm a guy, if I'm running a scout troop, right? Or not a single troop, but maybe like a whole you know state or something. Like I could buy twice as many uh, Mobula sixes and Radio Master pockets, you know, with my budget. Or I could buy three quarters to a half as many, depending on how much of a discount I get of the Orca stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm probably gonna buy the twice as many. But I, I don't know. Um, okay. Hopefully that's been helpful. Right, it's Brandon Beans, right. That's that's just an analog tiny whoop, right? 325 USD for an analog tiny whoop and a charger and some batteries. There's there's a substantial uptick for the hey, this is Orca. They got the packaging and they got the marketing and they're trying to find customers who want to be in that ecosystem and who don't realize that they're getting charged a lot for the for having that presented to them. And I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that. I want to say, I have made purchases in my life where people have said to me, you know, you could pay half as much if you just... And I've been like, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I just want to go and swipe my credit card and be given a thing and enjoy the thing. Yeah, and I'll I'm just, willing to I'll pay just, more for that. I'll just say the only the only reason I'm suggesting these things is because if you can find some way to make a deal with somebody who's going to provide you support, that means you're not worried and concerned about whoever's losing money on this or some bad scout leader you told to do this that losing mm -hmm. you know, not getting support or them having to call back and forth with the manufacturer and wait 30 days to get something from China, right? Like, like. These are all things that can happen in your program. Are those acceptable? Does anybody care? How much money do you have to use? Right. Those are all relevant pieces of information. But if, if like, less people care than the amount of money you have, and you want something that's a lot easier to have support on, you know, these more expensive options might be better. Right. That's why mm -hmm. I suggest like STEM program yeah. and Orca, because yeah. you can find different ways to fit what you need. Yeah. Valid. Neoflow says, "Why would you ever be okay with paying more for less? Because my time and attention has value. That's why." Why did you, did you go out to eat this morning or this afternoon? Did when you went to lunch? Did you go to a restaurant and buy a hamburger? Why did you pay? Did you know you could make your own hamburger for one fourth the cost, and it and potentially it would taste even better? But why didn't you just make your own hamburger? Because you didn't want to. You just wanted to go sit down and pay someone to make you a hamburger. What? That's why. Why did you pay more for less? Oh, well, that guy makes a restaurant's going to make a better hamburger than I ever could. Why don't you learn to cook? Why don't you become a chef? You could. Why don't you just go to culinary school and spend five years becoming a, a, a world class chef? And then you can make any food you want and it'll be cheaper. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to do something else with my life. That's why you pay more for less. Because your time has value and your attention has value. And there are things you want to spend your time and attention on and things you don't. And when you don't want to spend your time and attention on things, one option is to pay someone else to do it for you. And that's what you're doing. There you go. Not really, not really controversial. <laughs> 